What you're gonna do is I'm gonna give this a bit of a clean. Pots are nice and open too, so they can get dirt in there. To clean these pots, sliding pots out. These adjustments work quite smoothly. Independent volume control, that's really cool. Turn left or right channel. If I've got a reel to reel, then put. Oh, this has been taken off here. Oh, yeah, they're probably taking this off to service it. I might as well take it off to see that have a look under there. That'd be a good idea. Have we'll a look under this thing and see what sort of uh, transistors it uses. It's the be TA3 for sure. It's got to be a TA3 out, um, output transistor. Yeah, might as well, yeah. Um, oh, I don't have any contact cleaner left. That's all right. No capacitors. Main filter capacitor. This thing had good sound, so there was no hum. So that capacitor is obviously good. And it's just ordinary integrated circuits. No uh, TA3 transistors, like I thought there was going to be. Interesting. <laughs> one screw on that one. Only one screw on that one. What's going on there? So this real to real must be an. And I put to a reel to reel cassette so you can record from to a reel to reel. Nice. The old DIN, uh, DIN sockets. Yeah, that must go to the input of a reel to reel so you can record off um, record to a reel to reel, which is kind of cool. I can change that to an adapter that plugs into the computer to the audio input on the computer, and you can rip the that way. Not those cheap ass USB ones you can buy. I need a spindle adapter for this too, which I could use in one of the crappy newer, newer record player that we got on this to adapt on um, Japanese and American 45s. This all works. Just like that. And that stops you one from pulling out. All this mechanism here works. We tested it, we put some records on and this all works. Works beautifully, this mechanism. I can let this off. <gasps> You can't let the damage needle do on that. It's just a little lot. It does unload automatically too. Turn it backwards. Definitely does work though. Yeah, it might go when it's up. I gotta get a record and test it. Some might do that. Just be very careful. This is all pretty cheap plastic here, but it's a decent quality. Um, decent quality though. This is all metal. The cartridge is all good. Let's see. I need a bit of a clean. If I can clean it with um, a little toothbrush. This is all fully adjustable. And a little spring in there, you can adjust it. It's all fully adjustable in here. The uh, other one he had, I think he had one, I think uh, the Sanyu one had the same turntable as this. He had another old wooden one, which is going to dig out of storage and let me know, which had a calibration rate on it, it was a bit better quality. It had all weights you can adjust on the back of it, which is um, to fine tune the uh, weight on the stylus, which is what you need on a professional, good quality record player because the traction pressure is everything. These newer Chinese ones, it's just all one, one weight. Well, that's not, not, not always good for records. The weight has to be, the tracking has to be absolutely perfect. It has to be a certain weight. So this spring does that, and it's adjusted by this little screw here. That adjusts the pressure that this pulls on the record with. It's all metal, it's a metal shaft. Good quality unit. BSR are actually a pretty good brand. There was Garrard and BSR sold in Australia mainly back in those days. Garrard being the best. We had Garrards in the 60s on the uh, AWA and Australia made radiograms. Which I've seen one on for sale on Facebook. I took the Garrard turntable out and put one of these, a Chinese modern one of these Crosleys in place. 
big mistake. They're making a big mistake by doing that. But it's their records. They left their lit cherish records. Oh, well, that's their problem. Um, so I've got to find one of these screws to go in there. Don't know why that screw there was missing. There we are. 7, 10, and 12. That all works. This all works. She's a bit stiff, hasn't been used in a long time. There we go. There we go. This little switch here engages the mechanism as well. So, with the more modern ones, it uses those crappy DC motors that have drive belts in them. Always have them in neutral. And that lay them in position. If they go in neutral, make sure they're in neutral. And you should be able to spin that freely. Because what happens is the rubber, the rubber idle tyre has an axle sits on it, and it'll leave an indentation, and it stays on the rubber, and you have a bit of a bump, and your record player will play with a bit of a bump and noise to it. And of course, those newer Chinese ones, they're all belt driven and the belt perishes within six months and you can't get replacement belts for them anymore. You just buy a whole new record player. These newer ones are just crap, utter crap. So if you really cherish your vinyl records, get an old one like this to play them back on. It's a lot more gentle on your record than those newer ones. There we go, it's been back in properly. And nice and secure. Find a screw to go in there now. I don't know what near is missing. That might have been put apart before to clean or something because I couldn't find it earlier. It's been uh, tinkered with. Because these are protected, those sliders. Dust just goes straight in there on the tracks. But anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.